All right, so I'm Sheila, and I've got Fox the Green Wing. Um, this is the second free flight trip that I've been on. Um, and this one has been so much more relaxing than the first one. Um, the first one was all anxiety, and that really got in the way of me having fun. Um, in this trip, there was none of the anxiety, well, a little bit of the anxiety, <laughs> but not nearly as much, because um, one, I knew what to expect. And I knew, um, you know, I knew what my bird was capable of. You know, you put the work into the bird and the bird will give that back to you. On the first trip, I did feel like most of what the flights I got were just A to B's with Fox. And it took several days just to get her to have the confidence to even do those. Um, which, it was great because it was her first outdoor learning experience. Um, she really didn't have a lot of time outside before that trip. Um, this trip I got so many more exploratories and really long, beautiful flights. Um, it's really, really amazing seeing her in the sky because she just makes it look so effortless and just gliding around up there. Um, even the other people were like, oh, she's just so beautiful. <laughs> um, and I think that the biggest difference between the first trip and this trip is I had a lot not a lot, but I had time to get her outside. And I definitely looked for um, situations that were going to push her to learn. Um, instead of just, you know, I still have the batting net outside <laughs> at my house. But instead of just sticking to that, I've looked for, you know, challenging wind situations. And how do we, how do we do this? How do we do that? Um, and even at home, I wasn't getting a lot of, a lot more than A to B's until that last trip where I was flying her different directions across the wind. Um, and then, you know, one time she just crouched down and did her little wing thing and I'm like, okay, you want to go? And off she went. And so I think the biggest difference is just her confidence in herself and not being afraid of there's this huge open world out here. What is this? I did have Fox out to fly for um, three or four times The you the flight trip last year was in October and it's April now and I live in Colorado so a lot of the time it was cold and snowy but, um, but I really did you know I this is all for her so every chance I had where the weather was good and the timing was right I did get her out uh, to fly. One of the things that I found most helpful on uh, both flight trips was having other birds around she has been very hesitant and very cautious with the flights that she does and has chosen to take. And so having other birds around with her has actually helped so much because she's like, oh, they're doing it. I can do this too. Um, and it was, it was just so funny when the other green wings were out and she hadn't had a chance to fly yet on that first day that I was here. She was talking and her hey, what's up? How are you? And I could tell she was just so excited to get out there and, you know, be one of the flock. Hi! Hi. So on this trip, we had an opportunity to go scout new places because we're in a new location looking for new places for everybody to fly. Um, and I wanted to tag along because it's something that I'm struggling with is finding good spots at home. And so... Um, Probably the number one thing that I learned was that if you're going to hang out with bird tricks, you're going to work. <laughs> um, we had to do quite a bit of hiking, which um, is fantastic because I love being challenged. Um, and it's one of the things that I learned, especially with the bowl that we found yesterday, was even though it looks like you're not going to find anything, just over that next hill may be something perfect. And so... Um, that was probably my biggest takeaway is, you know, look for those opportunities, but don't give up on them too early, too. My next goal with Fox is going to be, 
to get her to, you know, if I see a spot and I'm like, hey, it would be cool to fly there, that I have the confidence that one, she's strong enough to be able to come to make it back. Um, and, you know, just that we can just go and do it. Um, she has the ability to be really strong. She just needs that conditioning. And so just finding ways to challenge her and make her think and, you know, get her to build that strength so that she can do what she's capable of. Um, my next biggest challenge is I um, am set to go pick up a new baby bird in the next couple of weeks. Because Fox flies so well with other birds, um, I really wanted her to have a partner that she can fly with anytime and not, you know, once every six months. And so I'm getting a new macaw. So when you guys see me next time, I'm going to have two. Um, super excited about it. A little bit scary. Um, and I, I'm not sure how she's going to handle that fox because fox is very much my bird and very attached to me. Um, so hoping that this time my kids can have a little bit more interaction so that it's not just a one person bird. I got Fox when she was about five months old and I did not socialize her at all. And so, you know, which is, my kids are almost out of the house, so it's okay that she doesn't really want much to do with them. But at the same time, she's kind of a jerk. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping for this new one that we can, um, you know, have a more family friendly bird. I want to say when I was in fourth grade or, you know, very young, we had somebody come to school and it was supposed to be like, hey, look at macaws. They're great. They're beautiful. They're colorful. But they also were like, but don't touch them because they'll bite your finger off. And so I had been terrified of macaws um, since. But I was visiting a bird store. They had a baby green wing and it was the most adorable, most cuddly bird I have ever seen in my life. And I was able to scratch its head and it didn't bite my finger off. And I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> maybe these guys are okay. And so, and I mean, I just, I had always wanted a big bird, but you know, people are always like, don't start out with a big bird. You have to have experience with little birds. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm not qualified to have a macaw. <laughs> and so, um, you know, but now that I, now that I have Fox, it just is, I mean, yeah, she can still bite my finger off. And there was one time she was really mad at the vet and she almost did. Uh, but that is literally the one and only time that I've been bitten by her because I have been able to see, you know, read the body language and know that, hey, if I do that, I'm going to get bit and back off and respect the bird. And so, um, and I was talking, so there, we've got a, a red front macaw that was here and he was so cute and a beautiful flyer. And the little birds really are a lot of fun to watch. Um, even the galahs are just absolutely hilarious. Um, but I don't know what it is. It's just the big birds just have a place in my heart. I really love big, beautiful, colorful birds. Um, you know, not that, not to say anything that any of the others are lesser, but for me, it's, it's the macaws. Um, I had not had GPS. I've always been borrowing, um, your GPS and it was something that I was like, yeah, I should do that. But yeah, you know, with kids and birds to feed and bills, things always come up and it wasn't really like, okay, I really need to do this. Um, but then, you know, there situations came up where GPS would have saved a lot of stress and tears and, and anxiety. And so, um, I was like, okay, this is it. I got it. Whatever it takes, I've got to figure out how to get the GPS. And so it worked out great because two of the other, um, free flight students had a GPS unit for their GLA, which uh, ended up being too big. And so, um, you know, they were like, hey, we're thinking about selling this. And I was like, well, I'm thinking about buying it. <laughs> and so it worked out perfect because they had it. Um, they had it there. I was able to take it. And now 
one of the things I'm most excited about is to be able to watch those flights. Um, it's really cool and I and it's I think it's a great way to be able to tell like I mean I think she's getting stronger but is she really? And so with the the flight recording and being able to watch how far they went, their speed, all of that, it's it's awesome. And so I'm glad to, that I have that tool that I can use. One, yeah, if she flies away, I, I that, but you know, like I was just saying, she she really always comes back. Um, so that is kind of my safety net, but I don't plan on using it as much for that. Um, but more for, you know, how is her flying improving? That's improving cool. awesome! Yeah. <laughs> She's drying quickly. Yeah, this desert air is <laughs> yeah, great for that. Yeah, good point. To go to Wisconsin and smell their dairy air. Right. What the heck? I think for anybody who's watching these videos and thinking about free flight or thinking about, hey, that looks cool, maybe I should do that, um, I think it's really important for them to know that it's not just a, hey, we hand over the money and we get a bird that knows how to fly. Um, it takes a lot of work and effort. Uh, and that was actually in my consult with Dave before I signed up for free flight. I'm like, okay, so you guys kind of scared me about it's a lot of work. And I'm like, I mean, what are we talking about? Like a 40 hour full time job? <laughs> and because um, I didn't know what to expect. And so, you know, it's not that it's not like, hey, I have to put in all of these grudging hours. It's just you've got to learn. You've got to know your bird. Um, and one of the most important things I think we saw on this trip is you've got to, it, you know, you have to have the complete package. You can't, can't be like, okay, we're going to do this training, but then I'm going to feed you whatever. I'm going to, you know, pet you this way, or I'm going to do this. You, it really has to be a commitment to that bird that you're going to give it the absolute best. Um, because, you know, the bird gives back to you what you give to it. And so, you know, and really, if we're going to take on the care of a bird that's going to live, outlive us, we really owe it to them to give them the best life. And so, um, and then also with the, the one thing that I kind of left the first free flight trip going, well, I think that was okay, but, um, you know, I was, I was really disappointed that I didn't get the flights that I was expecting. And so anybody who might be discouraged by that, just, you know, just keep at it. You got to keep going. Um, and they do get better. But, you know, she's two years old. She's still a baby. And if you think about it, a two-year-old human being doesn't know everything they're ever going to learn. And so, you know, they're, they learn a, their whole life just like us. And so if you keep going, they keep learning. Well, he's got that in slow mo. <laughs> Hello, world, wake me up to another good, good morning. Time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase. This I know. Yeah, I'm going for the ride, and by myself, I am alive, and I saw. Run toward the wind and let the challenge draw me in Cause I want more Oh, we are all looking for adventure 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 We are all looking for adventure
living free, living free, and I was meant to be. I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be free, meant to be free.